Hello everyone and welcome to another RenPy tutorial. So this is going to be the first in a series on developer tools. So I'm probably not going to get through all of the devel developer tools in this first video. Um, so I'll just do one of these every once in a while just to introduce you to some of the things you can do to make your programming life with RenPy a little bit easier. So first and foremost, it took me uh, an embarrassingly long time uh, in order to, uh, to figure out how to use these or to figure out that these even existed. And I actually had to have somebody tell me. So this is one of those things that I didn't find anywhere on YouTube um, or through any of the tutorials that I read. But as soon as I found this out, it made my life so much easier. So this is a way that you can make um, dynamic changes to your code in real time as your game is playing, which is absolutely awesome. So before, whenever I did any kind of debugging, um, I would have to create like multiple save files in my game so I could go to the exact point that I wanted to test. And the first game that I did ended up being, I mean, I worked on it over a span of about a year to a year and a half, and it ended up being, this was also before I knew that you could split things into separate files. So it was just one long script file that ended up being like over 10,000 lines of code. So as you can imagine, debugging that thing was an absolutely huge pain. Um, so I am trying to alleviate some of that pain for you by showing you all a lot of the things that I wish I had known a whole lot sooner. So one of the main tools that I use now that I wish I'd known about then, as I said, are the developer tools. And today we're going to look at the developer console. So I've got a very brief um, scene set up real quick. I'm going to show you how I have everything set up right now. So uh, from the label start, I have the uh, image button image map that I did in my last tutorial. I'll link to that above. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And um, at the very top, I've got a couple of um, variables. I've got a Boolean variable, and I went on ahead and changed Eileen's name to Luna. Eileen is the default name in the, the RenPy tutorials. That's why I was using Eileen before. That character's actual name is Luna. So I've got a talked to Luna variable, which is set to false because at the beginning we have not yet talked to her. And then I have a Luna Convo list. This is a list of conversation topics that we can bring up. Again, check out my video on lists in RenPy as well as in my tutorial series uh, on using lists in Python if you haven't seen those yet, and that will explain how to use lists. Right now, this list only has two items. You can talk about me and you can talk about you. All right, so after that, we have our start label. We have our, um, we have our image map. They are image buttons. And there is our image, uh, I'm sorry, our labels that we're going to jump to in our, um, in our uh, uh, image map. And then we have another label down here called Talk to Luna. It's going to show Luna. It's going to ask if you want to approach the woman at the bar, which is Luna. You can say either yes, at which point it will pass. Um, and if you say no, you don't want to talk to her, then it will jump back to the start label, which is our image button. So if we say yes, it's just going to pass the next section. If you've already talked to her, it'll say, I've already talked to her. If you haven't, then it will set talk to Luna to true, because at this point we have talked to her, and you can go into your conversation options. So one thing you'll notice is that in my conversation options, I have three. I have me, if me is in the conversation list, you if you is in combo list, and then us if us is in combo list. And notice that I do not have us in our combo list. There is a reason for that, and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and launch the game real quick, and I'll show you how to get into the developer console. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button. We're gonna fade into our first scene. And this is set up pretty much like before. So I did have that extra label where it will jump to the conversation with Luna, but right now I don't have any way to access that from in the game itself, which is a design flaw, unless you for some reason specifically don't want that accessible. But um, I still haven't resized my images from the last video. So if I go in there, they appear very large and zoomed in, but they uh, uh, act uh, just as intended. Um, if this part looks a little weird, that's because it's transparent, so it's actually showing part of that last image in there, but uh, yeah, we won't worry about that for right now. All right, so to access the uh, developer console, we're gonna hit Shift O on our keyboard, and that brings this up. Yours will probably be empty, but I was experimenting and trying some different things earlier, um, so I've got some stuff in there already, but just focus down here on the very bottom, and down here, we can type in 
uh, things that we want to dynamically happen in our code. So normally what I do whenever I'm working on this is I will have, um, I've got a two monitor setup. I've only got one monitor. My, my left hand monitor is the only one being shared with you right now via screen capture. My other monitor is to my right and I don't have anything on it right now. But typically what I will do is I will have my game on one monitor and my um, code on the other monitor. But if you only have a one monitor set up, you can do it this way. So you can just do that on the left and then have the other one on the right. It's a little bit smaller. Um, or actually, let me try top and bottom. I don't even know if I can do that. I think it'll let me. No, but just tries to do it on the, the whole screen. That's okay. But you can do it that way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and separate them out on my different monitors, though, just because that's easier for me here. If I do anything super relevant, then I'll, I'll be sure to drag my code back over. All right, so within here, we can do a lot of the things that we would normally do in our code. We can manipulate variables. We can... Um, um, we can call uh, different parts of our code. We can jump to labels. We can even reload. So that's one thing that's interesting is you can, like if I have my code here, like I can change things in my code and then save it, but it won't automatically um, happen in my code until I reload. So you can just type in reload. There we go. And that'll reload the script and jump right back into the game. So you don't have to, uh, you do have to save your code first, but you don't have to exit the game and then reload it and go back into it manually. You're going to spring up the console, type in reload, and do that. So one other thing that we can do is we can jump to labels. So for instance, I've got a label called Talk to Luna, which, like I said, is inaccessible from within the game. But I can say jump, and then the name of the label. Uh, oops, Talk to Luna. There we go, and then it jumps to that part of the code. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, let's talk to her. Uh, do you want to talk about something? Let's talk about me. Your name is Steven. And then it jumps back to the start. So I didn't put in a loop there. So we jump back to the beginning. So now if I jump to that label again, let's say yes, I already talked to her. So at this point, I can either, if I wanted to see what happens when I talk to her from fresh, I could reload my code, I could exit the game and go back into it, um, or I can, again, use the developer tools. So I'm going to go back in here, and this time, and again, I got my code set up on the right so I can remember what all my variables are called, um, I, can call, I can manipulate that variable directly. I'm going to say talked to Luna equals, actually, if I just type that in, it'll let me know that right now it's set to true. So I can say talked to Luna equals false. And again, when you're using Boolean variables, be sure you capitalize them. Boolean variables have to be capitalized or you'll get an error. So capital T and true, capital F and false. Now, when I call that variable, it's set to false. I can jump back to her, jump talk to Luna. And now it's as if we never spoke. That variable is set to false, so I can talk about her again, or talk to her again, rather. There we go. And then everything behaves as normal. Um, so let's say I wanted to access that third uh, conversation option, uh, which is us, but right now it is not in my convo list. So let's deal with that. First of all, I'm going to set that variable back to true again, Oops, or to false, rather. And then I can pull up my convo list variable just to see what's in there. And right now it is me and you. And again, I covered this in the earlier video. Um, be sure to be sure to check those out. Otherwise, you might be a little confused by what I'm doing here. But I'm going to say Luna convo list dot append us. And so that is going to put us there. Now, under that, it says none, because whenever you uh, manipulate a variable, it always has a return value. This doesn't return anything. Um, I'm going to uh, cover uh, returns um, in a later video, but right now, um, that doesn't return anything, so it just gives us none. None is a none variable, meaning there is no variable. So now if I type in Luna combo list, we now have me, you, and us. So if I jump talk to Luna. I'm going to say yes. Did you want to talk about something? Now I have that third conversation option because that is in the list. 
and you can do any of your normal variable manipulations that you would do. So I can say Luna convo list dot remove. Let's remove me. Be sure we put that in quotation marks because that is a string. Now it just has you and us. Um, we'll set that variable back to false. So remember, every time you talk to her, it sets that variable to true. So now when I jump there, let's say yes, we can talk to her. And now it's just you and us. The me conversation option is gone because I removed that from the list. Uh, there we go. All right, and that'll jump us back to the beginning. So I can also jump directly to my uh, labels where I'm talking to the uh, other people in the bar. So I can say jump, uh, let me see, what did I call these? Um, talk to bartender, and it, will autom and it will jump to that section in the code. So again, that's very useful for debugging purposes if you wanna run a specific part of your code, if you wanna try it out with different variables. Um, those are the ways that we can do that. So one important thing to note is that all of that stuff that I did did not change any of my code. I'm just manipulating these variables from within the game. So if I pull up my code, talk to Luna is still set to false. Luna combo list is still set to me and you. Everything is exactly as I left it. It will not change in the code. Um, I think in a later video, we're going to get into the interactive director, and that is a way that we can dynamically change our code. Um, full disclosure, I never really use the interactive director. I haven't taken the time to fully learn it, so I'm going to research that a little bit so I can cover it in uh, full depth and give it the, the attention that it deserves in a future video. But I will give you a quick preview of a couple of things that you can do real quick, a couple of other things. I'm going to type in, hit shift D, and this brings up the developer menu. So, and this just lets us know some different things that we can do. For instance, Shift and O brings up the console, which we've already done, or I can just click there and that'll bring it up. By the way, if you hit escape, that'll go back to your game. So the D key, or I can just click here, that will bring me, that'll bring up the interactive director. And the interactive director is just a way that you can change scripts and variables and transitions and things like that from within the game, kind of like we did with the console just then. But like I said, when you use the interactive director, it actually changes your code. The uh, shift O, the um, um, developer console does not do that. So we can reload the game by hitting shift and R, or we can do that through the reload command in the console as we did a moment ago. Uh, we have a variable viewer. So if we hit that, it'll bring up the variables that are used. So I have the Luna convo list. I have talked to Luna. Then I also have some other variables that I did not explicitly declare that are used by the game. For instance, mouse visible. If that is set to false, that'll make it where you can't see the mouse cursor. I've got quick menu, which uh, if I go back, you'll see that I have the quick menu on the bottom. If I set that to false, then the quick menu won't appear there. And again, you activate this by hitting, or access this by hitting shift and D. Uh, let me see, what else do I have? I've got a file name list, and that brings up a list of file names that are used whole bunch of stuff and again a lot of these are automatically generated this one actually opens up a file a text file from within your text editor it generates this um, dynamically this file does not exist until you run it and it gives you that files txt all right and again there are a couple of other things image attributes um, i am not sure exactly what that does image location picker uh, this one i've also never used but that is kind of interesting. I'll have to play around with this. I'll, like I said, I'll cover some of these um, in more depth in a future video, but I just wanted to give a very brief overview of the console. And again, that is super, super useful, especially as your code grows longer, as you start using multiple files. Um, if you do use multiple files, you can use the jump command to jump across files. Um, pretty much anything you want. You can jump to a label anywhere in your game, even across files. All right, so that will about do us for today. But if you learned something or if you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Um, also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. Check out my other video series where I'm going through Python and uh, doing like a full video game coding tutorial with Python. 
Um, I might get into doing some other game engines later uh, that I am learning how to use. So definitely stay tuned. I've got lots of cool stuff on the way. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.